I'm allowed to teach you the way teaching should be done. I'm not jamming 35, 40 years down your throat in three days, all right? That is something that I often have to try to do, but it's not ideal because that's not the way we learn the best. The way we learn the best is the way schools are largely structured. They might not be teaching the right thing, but the process is right, where no one who's in kindergarten is getting 12th grade material, and no one who's in third grade is getting higher chemistry, all right? So it's broken down by grade, and this allows me to give you little pieces of the puzzle every single session and over time those puzzles those puzzle pieces seem very disconnected in the beginning mm -hmm. and then over time you start to see that the puzzle pieces start moving closer and closer together until they start to really form a cohesive whole and that process of first learning all the individual pieces and then the spaces between the pieces starting to narrow until the pieces fit and lock together into one complete puzzle, that's what I'm allowed to do the best here by giving you each individual puzzle piece one by one. And so guys, I, I'm telling you, if you give it your best for the next several months, if you can give me a year, OMG, you won't recognize who you are as a trader, your knowledge, your um, ability to spot opportunity, your know-how of knowing what to do at every moment during a trade without hesitation, without doubt, without fear is going to really go through the roof. So anyway, I'm very glad that you're here, guys. Before we get started, let me know where you're from. I'm, I'm curious. Now, guys, for the benefit of those who are new with us here today, once again, welcome. Um, I am gonna speak a little bit more basically so that you get your footing right in the beginning. So we trade the majority of times off the two, two, minute, two minute chart. Every bar you see here represents two minutes of, of trading. All right, there are two main moving averages on the chart at all times, a 20 period moving average, that's the blue line, and a 200 period moving average, that's the red line. Now, we often, are looking for a trading opportunity once the market opens from a narrow state. So I want you to always assume that we're playing two minute charts. So the 20 period moving average is averaging the last 20 two minute bars, the last closing, the last 20 closing prices of the two minute bars. The 200 period moving average is averaging the last 200 closes on the two minute chart, okay? now. We have the, the 20 and the 200 overlaid on our two minute chart. And they're both, look at, notice how the 20 and the 200 are relatively flat and close together. That's important. So they're relatively flat and close together. They're laying on their backs, if you will. They're close together. They're sunbathing, whatever, however you want to look at it, right? They're not standing up. They're not running to the upside. They're not running to the downside. They're relatively flat and they're relatively close together. When you have these two moving averages relatively close together, the location right above them, OMG, let's just put it, OMG, this. You build your house there and you can name your price. Do you understand this? This is the best location. That's why I have it labeled number one, duh. Okay, the number be the best location, the number one location, the location that will give your events the highest value, that will, that will give your house the highest value, that will give your elephant bar the highest value, that will give your bottoming tail bar the highest value, that will give your bull 180 the highest value is that location right there. All right. So if you get an elephant bar here, it's it does it's not 70% follow through. It's now in the 80% follow through. If you put a bottoming tail bar there, it's not 70%, it's 80% now. If you put dual bottoming tail bars there, it's not it's practically 100% guaranteed. 
That's very dangerous to say, but practically, almost. All right, now, um, a stock can have three different states, a narrow state, a wide state, a neutral state. All right, what you see, one quick and dirty way to determine the state of your stock, it's not the only way, but it's a very quick and dirty way, the very basic, quick way you're not going to be wrong most of the time using this very quick method is to really just judge the space between your, your moving averages. So here you're rather wide. I'd say you're more neutral here. And I would say that you're very narrow here. All right. The two moving averages are very, very close together. Now, the most ideal narrow state is when both of them are relatively flat. We don't have the ideal narrow state. I want you to take note of this. The ideal narrow state is when the 20 period moving average, right? Let me draw that for you. So here's an ideal narrow state. 20 period moving average is flat. 200 period moving average is relatively flat. Now, I don't want you to obsess about flatness. All right, I want you to be aware that flatness is better, but it doesn't mean that you can't take a play where there's some slant in the moving average. Don't overly obsess with this. I don't want you bringing out geometric tools out of your tool bag and start measuring, Oliver, this is not exactly flat. I'm not taking the trade. No, don't obsess over it. I want you to be aware of it. I just want you to know that the creme de la creme is when both of them are flat but you can play when there's slant, um, especially if the slant is produces exceptionally narrow space and it's combined with power. So remember that, exceptionally narrow combined with power. What's power? A lot of one color, a lot of green, solid, powerful green, or a lot of red, solid, powerful red. Now, what we have here right off the open with, with Coca-Cola, very narrow state, and the first two-minute bar of the day is power red, right into the narrow state. Now, this is sort of like a wrecking ball, all right? A lot of people are very... A lot of novice traders are very nervous about playing against support. So a lot of traders would consider this a support area. Let me do this in a different color. So a lot of people would consider this a support area. The 200 is there. The 20 period moving average is there. It started its life today above the support and it's coming down to support. But here's the, here's the error that they make. Not that the idea that that's not support is not, that that support is, is invalid. It's valid. But how does your stock get to support? That's what I want you to be aware of. That's the nuance that's going to separate you from the others that don't know these things, right? If you crash into support, you weaken support. I'm going to repeat that. If you collapse, crash into support, you weaken the support. And this is what I call the wrecking ball theme. Many of you are already familiar with the wrecking ball theme, right? You have a building. The building is supported by a foundation, but this building needs to come down. And the wrecking ball, the guy working the wrecking ball, swings the wrecking ball against this abandoned building that's still standing on its foundation. It crashes into the building, weakening the foundation. That first swing may not bring the building down, but it will certainly weaken the building at its foundation so that the next attempt easily collapses the building. And so you have to monitor when it comes to support and resistance, you have to monitor how did the stock uh, reach the support or resistance? Did it reach it violently? Did it reach it with power and unmistakable force? Because if that's the case, it's the wrecking ball weakening the item. 
Okay. So here with Coca-Cola, you've got two moving averages basically underneath the stock, which theoretically serves as support, but it crashes. It doesn't just drift down there. It crashes into the support area. It's violent. It's a wrecking ball. And so, therefore, it weakens this area of support. Now, what I'm typically looking for here, what I'm typically looking for is for support to bounce the stock a little bit, which I'm not going to be afraid of. So the stock might bounce a lot of times off of the support and then, boom, resume its drop. That bounce is what I call the dead cat bounce. Now, guys, I'm a cat lover. I'm an animal lover. Don't take offense at this. It's just the best way I've learned to teach this, okay? When, when you get a crash, your cat has basically, unfortunately, fell and hit the pavement here. Just because the body of the cat bounces doesn't mean that the cat is alive. That drop was so violent. That drop was so powerful. I'm sorry. The cat's gone. The carcass might bounce off the ground, but the cat is not alive. Do you understand? This bounce is a false bounce. It is not the bounce of an alive thing. It's the bounce of a dead thing. Okay? And... What I'm looking for on that bounce is an opportunity to get in short and play to the downside. So the bounce is a gift. The bounce is a gift to play the next color change. When red takes out green, boom, I'm out. You'll often get this scenario when you crash into support. You crash into support and you get the bounce. That bounce is false, boom, you want to take advantage of that bounce on the neck on the very first color change. Okay. Now, that will typically happen the bounce, listen to me carefully, this is very important. The bounce will happen 50% of the time, look, 50% of the time, you're going to get a bounce first off support and then resume to the downside 50% of the time. The other 50% of the time, you're gonna get Coca-Cola. You're gonna get this, no bounce whatsoever, boom. So 50% of the time you get the bounce first, 50% of the time you get no bounce. Now, I'll give you a story. Some of you know the story, but for the benefit of those who are new with us, I'm gonna give you the story again, okay? I used to, I, this was one of my number one, this, this was in the group of my, what I call my bread and butter plays, crashes into support, all right, bounce, boom, short, boom, crashes into support, let me, let me just demonstrate it one more time, crashes into support, bounce, take advantage of the play on the bounce on the color change, boom, that was my go one of like four go-to bread and butter money plays. I built powerful days playing these four things every single day. This was one of them, okay? And also in reverse, everything I'm explaining to you is operational in reverse, okay? So I would literally just, whenever I saw a crash into support, I'd be waiting for the bounce, waiting for the bounce. And I was extraordinarily accurate with this. What I began to realize is I went back over my past plays. I began to look at the ones that I didn't get because they didn't bounced, bounce. So I would start keeping track of the plays I wanted to bounce, but I didn't get in because they didn't bounce. And that's when I discovered something powerful. I was missing 50%, I was leaving 50% of the money that was mine in the market. I wasn't taking what was rightfully mine. 50% don't bounce. 
50% do bounce. I was just taking 50% of the opportunities that belong to me. I earned the right to take this because I learned the concept, okay? But I was leaving 50% of the money on the table, so I stopped waiting for the bounce. I'm going to repeat that. I stopped waiting for the bounce in the crash into support play. This is the crash into support play, right? So what I began to do is go into the play, boom, before the bounce. I'm going to repeat that. What I began to do to get my other 50%, I go into the crash. That's right. It doesn't matter. Even if it's late, I go into it. So I go into part of it here. So let's say I take two lots into the crash because 50% don't bounce. The other 50% will. And I will add to this one if it bounces, all right? Now, I go in lighter than I would. So if this, if, if I didn't go in first, maybe I would do four here, do you understand? But because I'm going in in advance, I'm only doing two and two here, or even more, but you follow what I'm saying. So. I'm going to go in lighter than normal. So if your normal trade is two lots, you're going to go in one lot. Just in case. Just in case you don't get the bounce. Tell me you understand this. All right? Tell me you understand this. You got it? All right. Now, this means that on 50% of your plays you might make lighter money than if it bounced. The bounce plays will be the bigger money. So in this scenario, if this play here doesn't bounce, I only get profits on one lot. If it bounces, I get my second lot and it's a bigger play. So the bounce off support will typically produce the bigger play, but at least you're not leaving behind, like I, I did for years, at least you're not leaving behind 50% of your money. 50% don't bounce. Get in there anyway. All right? Now, your goal is to get into the bounce. If this is a two-minute bar, you want to get into that bar in the last 30 seconds of the bar. So one minute, 30 seconds and beyond... You're in, all right? One minute, 30 seconds and beyond, you're in. You want to get into the violent bar before it finishes. One minute, 40 seconds, one minute, 50 seconds, fine. But get in before the bar finishes, okay? Once you're in, your stop is above the high of the bar. The cat is not going to climb all the way up nine times out of every 10. Now, listen. If the cat climbs all the way up to stop you out, you better get out and run because that cat is angry at you. It is not dead. It's alive and it's angry. All right. So you get out and you run. All right. No questions asked. It's one out of 10. One out of 10 times this is going to happen to you. But here's the beautiful thing. You, you get, you lose on the lighter lot, all right? You lose on the lighter lot, not the heavier lot. Remember, you go into this one light, you add on the failure to make it heavier. So because this had no failure and just stopped you out, you're losing lighter than you typically win, okay? All right, beautiful concept, beautiful concept. So, in, boom, and the rest is history. Now, I'll be honest with you and let you know that I didn't grab the first bar. That's what I want you to grab. I don't typically trade Coca-Cola. I just caught it in passing this morning. 
So I just decided to take it even if it were late. Do you understand? So I took it late on the clearing element of the bar, of the, of the second bar. Now, this is going to go into another concept I want you to take a note of. When you have two or more similar like bars, you can look at them as one bar. You can join them together. So I want to, I want, I want to do this. I want to erase part of the bar and show you where I got into the bar, more or less. Okay? More into the second bar. We're going to pretend like this, did, this didn't happen yet. This is where the bar is, right? And look at this. I'm like, whoa, look at that first bar. But also, I'm going to now look at these two bars as one. Now, let me draw it in for you. So it started going down from where? It started going down from the top. So I'm going to draw, draw, draw in, in my mind, all the way through this bar. And that's going to give me clarity. Two consecutive can be joined together to give you clarity. Oh, my God. Now, that's violent. Oh, my God. Now, that's powerful. Oh, my God. That's the wrecking ball. Sometimes the wrecking ball needs two times to break through the, through the building. Sometimes it's so powerful, it breaks through the building or knocks the building down with one swing. This is the one swing knockdown. This is lower. And even if it bounces... It's likely still lower. 50% are going to give me the bounce first. And 50% are just going to keep going. So I didn't get the first bar, but I got it right about there. Boom! And I was actually waiting up here for a bounce, which never came. And the rest is history. <laughs> powerful, powerful, powerful concept. Crashes into support. Don't be afraid of the support. Get in that short. I like that. That rhymed. Crashes into support. Don't be afraid. What did I say? Crashes into support, don't get afraid. What did I say? I forgot, but it rhymed. <laughs> I love it. All right. Yeah, you can say this is sort of um, uh, man parative is asking me, is this what we call a market law for? Some of the new people won't know that yet. Um, but yeah, it's sort of like a market law for failed to make a, a significant new high. So your low is probably in. All right. These are some of the things that, that my traders this morning traded. I want to cover this is when you have a counter play. You've got support, but your bar is countering the support, right? Your bar is countering the support. But what about a bar that is in sync with the support? So these are the two I want to cover with you today. So I took the counter support play. Some of my other traders took plays that fall into the category of go with the support plays. All right. So let's take a look at uh, we can take a look at the first one, which um, I think was should we look? Oh, Google. Google. Now here you have, remember, the quick and dirty way to determine whether or not you are wide or narrow is the quick and dirty way is judge the space between your 20 and your 200. Relatively narrow. This is getting wider, but this is not wide, guys. They don't have to be kissing. They just can't be clearly wide like an eight-year-old would say, wow, those are far apart. These are not that far apart, right? All right, so relatively relatively narrow, relatively close together, 
all right? And the first bar is in sync with support. It's not the one we covered before. The one we covered is counter support. Boom, crash into the support. All right, this is go with the support play. You're, it's originating right around the top of your support, right around support and producing that power green bar. I played the power counter red bar into support. These traders played the go with support play. Boom. Now they're getting into this bar the same way I'm getting into this bar toward the end of the bar's formation. They're getting into bar number one toward the end of the bar's formation. A minute, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, 40 seconds, you know. It's general, but you definitely want a good portion of the bar already finished. Because if you do this too early, this green bar could turn into something else, all right? If you do it in the first, if this is a green bar in the first 15 seconds, you still have an eternity to flip the bar. You wanna go into the bar when you're absolutely certain there's not enough time to change this. There's not enough time in this two minute period to wipe that amount of green out. So I'm safe, make, I'm safe with this bar pretty much is going to remain a, a nice, sizable, powerful green bar by the time it's two minute period is over. All right, a minute, 30 seconds, a minute, 40 seconds, boom, in the bar. Stop, protective stop under the bar. Why do you want this if the market removes the very reason that you got into the play? So we're gonna get out of the play. This is gonna happen one time out of every 10 times on average. This is going to happen, guys. We can't eliminate it. We just have to deal with it. It's only one times out of every 10 that you're going to get stopped out on this type of play. All right. And boom, two lots, stop, give me an example. And the trader is looking for a whale, right? Every trader is looking for a whale, a two-leg play. And this delivered the whale. The key thing about the whale is that the pullback after leg one must remain in the top 50% of leg one. So let's break leg one in half. That's leg one. Here's about the 50% mark, boom well above and anywhere above the 50% the top 50 here's the bottom 50 you just take the you, you just take a color change boom here's a color change when does green take out red right here boom you can ignore the tails whale complete look at your moving averages relatively tight they're a little wider here but tight off the open, okay? You start the morning off again, powerful bar with the flow, with support. Remember my Coca-Cola was counter support play. This is a with the support play. One minute, 30 seconds into that bar, boom, protect yourself or do maximum loss to get under that 200. A lot of times you don't want to get stopped out in support area, so try to get your stop under support, okay? And the rest is history. That's leg one. We get a pullback, stays in the upper 50%. Any of these color changes are okay. Whale complete. Do you understand this? This is what you're after every play. You're playing the initial surge, taking profits somewhere on leg one, okay? Getting back in on the color change if the pullback is, let me do this in color, color way, right? So here's your quintessential trade, boom. 
You're getting in. You're taking some profits. You're monitoring the pullback. If the pullback stays in the top 50% of leg one, you're getting in on the next color change and whale complete out. Okay, now to demonstrate that, once again, boom, you're getting in. You're taking profits somewhere along the lines of leg one, you're monitoring the pullback. As long as your entry color change here is above in the top 50%, all right, the entry judges the 50%, by the way, all right? So let's say two, one, one, whale complete. Boom, boom, and there you go. Okay, now here you've got, it's relatively narrow. You've got this power bar. You're getting in one minute, 30 seconds into that bar. Protect yourself under the low, all right? And you're taking profits. You're looking for the possible whale, but you break the 50%. So when you break the 50%, you're either going to get stopped out, which you didn't, or you're going to bounce. I want you getting out halfway on the bounce. That's a different study session, but I'm just dropping that note there. If you're still in the play, and this is what you want, but if you break... You're getting out there and not, can't get out there anymore. So you're bringing your target down to the halfway mark. You got that? You got that? All right. So your scenarios are, shoot, your scenarios are this. Let me know if you got this, guys. Your scenarios are this. Boom, stay in the top 50%. Whale complete. Scenario is this. Don't stay in the top 50%. Now... This has to be brought down. Your target has to be brought down from this area to this area. Halfway, halfway, boom, boom, out. Beautiful. And uh, I think that was pretty much it. Someone was telling me Silver Rider was just saying that Intel was the one in 10 scenario. Let me take a look here. All right, Intel was the one in 10 scenario where, uh, yes, in a way, yes, in a way, 60, 70, okay, yeah. So if you went into this bar and your stop is here, you're stopped out. Yeah, it happens, guys. It's going to happen. It is going to happen. Now, because we are in a bear market, your short plays on average are going to have better odds than your long plays. Doesn't mean you can't go long, but please understand, right? There are two things. There's what the play says and what the overall market's flow is. The overall market's flow is down. You can selectively choose longs, but your shorts are going to statistically have better odds. All right? And so if you got if you went into Intel, Ben is saying he went into Intel today. If you went into Intel and you got stopped out, if you, you know, don't look at a proper stop out as a loss. A proper stop out is a gain, it's a win. A loss is if you get out here. All right? And so why did you lose this? Because this is the appropriate loss. That's not the appropriate loss. So I don't consider proper stopouts as losing trades because the winning trades take care of them. It's the inappropriate stopouts that are real losing trades. Um, Starbucks, Richard says Starbucks. Starbucks was interesting because Starbucks was the, the stop and reverse play, which that's the stop and reverse play. All right. That's a different topic, but you got to reverse this. So if you went in long, you got to flip this to short here, all right? 
and there's you get your money back and you get your whale. All right. And you get your whale. All right. So I did have I did have some traders that took this reverse play here. All right. But that's a different topic. We'll get to that. When can we know when the second leg is about to happen if the color change fails to work? Well, if it fails to work and hits your stop, you're out. You can never know, guys. This is a very big fallacy amongst untrained novice traders. They think that to become successful in the market is to develop some ability to predict what's going to happen. No one can predict what's going to happen. All we can do is get astute at odds, probability. So what I teach you are the highest probability trades that, that are in existence. The highest probability that this should happen next. We can't predict when it's not going to happen, when it is going to happen. All I can tell you is that I will not teach you anything that does not happen on average seven times out of every 10. That's the magic number here. I want you to understand that. The magic number is seven. Seven times out of every 10. That's the average probability number of every single thing I teach you. If something has six, an average of six or an average of five, I won't teach you. They, are, they exist, but I won't teach you. I need it to meet that minimum requirement. Some things have nine some things have eight, but my cutoff is seven, okay? So you're, I want you to know that every single thing I teach you is, has this high probability of if you do it 10 times, you should fall around seven times. Seven times out of every 10, eight, nine, whatever. It should be around there, okay? And... uh. But you can't predict, is this one? So let's say this works seven times out of every 10 on average. You have no way of predicting if this one is going to be one of the three that don't go or one of the seven that goes. It doesn't matter. Just get to 10. Just do it 10 times and you should have money. That's what a professional player does. It's a numbers game to a professional player. Once a professional player gets something that happens seven times out of every 10, he just says, let me get the 10. Let me get the 10. Let me get the 10. I don't care about the individual results of every little trade. I just want to get to 10 because every time I get the 10, I have more money. Let me get the 10. Let me do this 10 times. Let me do this 10 times. And they stop obsessing about whether this one was the winner or the next one was the loser. Doesn't matter. At the end of 10, I'm always richer than I was, I'm richer on trade 10 of this tactic than I was on trade one of this tactic. So we can't predict, we can't know. If it hits your stop, you're out. If it doesn't, you're not out, All right? And that's not overcomplicating the game. All right, Ari says, I did a study of 5,000 elephant bars, got results over 80%. That's what I'm talking about. And, it's, and, if you, and if you start adding position to those things, you can even jump that up to close to the 90 percentile. Now, most of you should know that I'm an expert at trading the open. This is what made me somewhat famous on Wall Street because no one traded the open like I did on Wall Street. I created sort of like a new, new mode of operating. That's why so many firms wanted to, to learn from me, my style. Because in the first 20 minutes, I would have more money. First 20 minutes to one hour, I would have more money than the vast majority of all traders on the street. This was crazy. But I became that 20 to 30 minute trading master. And most traders would start 30 minutes later because they felt they needed to see what the market, what the market's flow, what the market's path of least resistance was. So they gave themselves 15 to 30 minutes to watch. Meanwhile, I'm finished. This is what made me unique all the way back into the mid to late 1980s. That's how early this was, guys. So here's the first bar of the morning. Now, what if the first bar was up here? Then, it's di then, then you would be playing long. 
But we don't have to know which side. We just have to wait for the market to tell us. Well, the market is giving us the first bar and it's giving us the first bar and we know what that first bar is. It's a topping tail bar and it we we sh you should know whether it's anticipation or or confirmation entry. Now confirmation entry is one penny under the low and anticipation that's confirmation. This is anticipation. Ah. Right? Anticipation. And I say it's anticipation. Why? The body is not little. The body is not little like this. That's what a real tail bar is. If that red bar grows more then it stops being a confirmation tail. It starts being a torpedo. So your anticipation in, boom, let's say two lots. All right, in the professional world, a single lot is 1,000 shares. All right, a single lot is 1,000 shares. Two lots is 2,000 shares. Professionals use a lot size is based on thousands, right? So 2,000 shares, boom, that's two lots right there. All right, let's get this right here. So we're going in two, two lots. What's your stop? Protection, boom, one penny above the high. And the rest is history. Now, let's talk about, <clears throat> let's talk about, um, Profit taking. I want you to think of the number four. Okay? So <clears throat> we are getting into the, so the elephant has four feet. We're getting into the first foot of the elephant right there. Now, additional foots have to be what I call pushes, not bars. A little bar doesn't count. So little bars must be thrown together to get another foot. So this is foot one. This is foot two. These two are foot two. You can, you can always combine two little ones to get a foot. So here's foot three. And here's foot four. I hope you understand that. Little single bars can't count as a foot. You need two little bars to count as a foot, or you need one little bar and a regular bar to count as a foot. You gotta throw the little one in with the bigger one, but a little one doesn't count. Another way of looking at this is just to remove the little one out of the equation, but I prefer the other approach in your mind, which is to combine them. All right, so in a sense, you have foot one, you have foot two, you have foot three, and you have foot four. You should be taking profits. You can take profits in foot three and four. So what a lot of traders would do is they would be in, boom, two, one, okay? Profit take. Profit take, boom, done. Okay? This is two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Twelve minutes. Twelve minutes, and you're freaking done. All right? And this is roughly a 75 cent play. You're talking about 2,000 shares on that. That's pretty, pretty big. All right? A little less than $2,000, but still. All right, now, now. All right, we will get to adding as well. I just want you to understand these steps again. So, anticipation entry tail bar. It's torpedo bar. That's anticipation. Two lots anticipation. One penny stop above the high. This is foot one. Here is foot two. Here's foot three. 
and here's foot four. Boom, boom, profit tick. Beautiful. All right, let's go to the next example here. Now, look to the left of your chart. This is Morgan Stanley, a Wall Street bank. I used to, I trained a lot of traders in Wall Street and in, in Morgan Stanley back in the early 1990s. So Morgan Stanley, look at their stock. Look to the left. Look at your two moving averages. Always look, always determine what the state of the, the moving averages are first. Look at how close they are. Look at how they're on their backs. They're sideways. They're flat and close together. Now, here is the first bar. If I'm not mistaken here. Maybe it's the second bar. But here is your elephant like bar or one way to look at this one way to look at this is that it's a tail bar it's an anticipation tail bar right because take a look at this wasn't this green small at one point and look at that tail now some of you say well oliver wasn't this a red bar first it was and wasn't that in the perfect location to go short. It's in the perfect location to go short. And this is why, traders, that you cannot anticipate too early. This is in the first few seconds of the bar. Do you understand? This is the first few seconds. If you get in too early, look at what happens. Boom, boom. That's why that one minute, 30 second golden rule is there to not get tricked like this so often. Okay. So if you get this thing one minute, 30 seconds, it's clear that this is the buy. This is my anticipation buy. One minute, 30 seconds, one minute, 40 seconds into the bar. Boom. Two, stop one penny below the low. And now you're in. Now, you know that three, four feet later, we want, we have the right to take profits. But I also want you to try to double down on your plays, to add to your plays. Okay? So most of my traders, they have five lots to play with. Okay? So we're already in two. We're going to put another one or two into the play on what? The next color change. I'm going to do that color change change cc color change what is a color change when a green bar takes out a red bar i want you to buy the green bar add the green bar the first one after so you're in the original event the first time green eliminates a red bar i want you in that green bar i want you inside of the green bar that eliminates a red bar and i want you to do it pretty quickly so see how this is red when does it eliminate it right there boom you're not waiting for a minute in this case remember when you're buying above something there's no waiting so you get right into this green bar as soon as it clears the high of a red bar, okay? Your entry is right there, boom! So here's how this trade goes. Enter, boom, protection, add, boom! The rest is history. Now, let's count the feet, right? Let's count the feet, okay? Uh, this ad counts as a foot after, the, after this one. So you've got, this is, this is foot one. You've added on foot two. Elephant has, elephant has three. Here's foot three. And remember, these little bars don't count. Here, I would add these three, these two green together. Here's foot four. And yes, sometimes you can get a foot five. Five is not a foot. 
it's more like the elephant sits down in the tub. So the elephant sometimes gets his first foot in the tub, puts his second foot in the tub, his third foot in the tub. Now he's got all feet in the tub. And sometimes he just says, I'm just going to take a bath. And he sits down in the tub. Now, once he sits down in the tub, the only next action is to get up. Once the elephant gets up, boom. Then he steps one foot out of the tub, boom. Then another foot, boom. And then another foot, boom. Now he's back outside of the tub. And the, and the story repeats. Elephant in the tub, one, two, three, four, sit down. Elephant stands up, out, stands up. One, two, three, four, out. And repeat, repeat, repeat. Elephant in, one, two, three, four, sits down, boom. Elephant stands up, boom. Gets out, one, two, three, four, out. Repeat, repeat, repeat. All this game is, guys, is elephants getting in the tub, institutions getting in a stock, institutions coming out of a stock, elephants getting in the tub, elephants coming out of the tub. And it's based on this four, five step process. You see it here. I'm not even cherry picking this, guys. So let's go over the play again. Boom, two, stop, boom, two, all right, now we've got foot one, foot two, foot three, foot four, foot five. You should be, you should be out. This is your first play. And look at when you're finished for the day. Really, boom. That's enough to make a living right there. 30 minutes, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, out, done. Go to the beach, la playa. Love it. You don't have to sit down at a freaking computer screen and get and develop blurry eyes and a bad bladder because you're so scared of leaving a play. You don't even want to go to the bathroom. You don't have to play like that. That's a novice game. Pros can pick their time to milk the market for the highest probability of plays and be out doesn't mean that you can't play longer if you want and take plays like, all right, I'm going to take the next color, color, color change. I'm going to take the next color change and make more. You can do overtime if you want. You just, I just don't want you to have to do overtime. I don't want you to have to stare at a computer screen all day. All right, guys, look, at, look to the left. Here's eBay. Look at your moving averages. Relatively close. Here they're relatively far away right? They don't have to be super, super close either, guys. So don't, this is relatively close. And this is far. Okay. So in comparison, this is narrow. That's fine. Anyway, your stock, the first bar of the morning, boom, elephant bar, two bars in, two, two lots in, protect yourself. First, now you're waiting. You're saying, Oliver always told me that in order to be a big trader, I've got to double up. I've got to double down. When is the first color change going to happen? First, you get a red bar. Now, remember, guys, after that red bar, you don't know what's next, right? You don't know what's next. You're in. Here's your stop. Let's erase this. You don't see this yet. Oh, shoot. Wrong color. You don't see this yet. This is not there yet. Ah, you get this red bar. And you don't know if that red bar is going to stop you out. <laughs> get this right. I'll get this right. I will get this right, guys. I will get it right. You don't know. But you're salivating. You know why you're salivating? Because you're like, this could be my double down moment. All I need is for that red bar to be taken out. All I need, you see this green bar starts to form here. You're like, uh-oh, uh-oh, let's get ready. You see it, you're watching it. Saliva is dropping down the corners of your mouth. You're not wiping your fingers on the keyboard. Boom! You're coming in right there. You're not waiting. There's no time requirement with this because you're buying above something. Boom! You're going in two more lots. One lot or two more lots. All right? 
We want the double down. We want the double down. Now, remember, you got the elephant's first foot. All right? Here's foot two. I, I put these together. Here's foot three. Boom. Here's foot four. One, two, three, four. That's how you professionally profit take. <laughs> that is like a freaking Picasso right there. That is a Monet. A Monet. A Monet. A Picasso. A Picasso. I love that. Doesn't matter if you lose money on it. The experience is the thing right now. Doesn't matter if you win. The experience is the thing right now. All right. Try to find scenarios in the past where it worked. Try to find scenarios in the past where it didn't work. All right. These are the steps you take to make it yours because right now it's mine. And the only way it's going to start rewarding you, the only way you can pull money out of it is when it becomes yours. You can't make money from it if it's still mine. All right. So that's your assignment this week. Go to work. Love you guys to death. All right. Boom.